75 feet tall and 10 feet in diameter. It cons the engine consisted of three, what they call three barrels, three barrels, two boosters and a sustainer. The whole complete was called the cluster. The booster engine developed 150,000 pounds of thrust. They fired for about two minutes. Then they slid off rails, dropped into the ocean. The middle engine was called the sustainer. It developed 60,000 pounds of thrust, and it fired for about five minutes. In other words, after the boosters came off, the sustainer engine would continue to fire and push the vehicle, the missile, onto its target about, was up to say, 6,000 miles away. This was an engineering marvel. I'll tell you what. Like, for example, on the V-2 missile that the Germans built, you had a fuselage or whatever they call it, a hull. Inside were your liquid oxygen tank and liquid and the alcohol tank, the fuel. The Atlas did not have a fuselage structure. The tanks were the structure. They were two hundredths of an inch thick stainless. Think of a Coke can. These were so flimsy that they had to keep the tanks pressurized at all times. And once it was built to transport anywhere. Otherwise, it would collapse of its own weight. In fact, one of the Atlas blew up at Edwards Air Force Base back in the late 50s. Walt Greenwald, my buddy, and I were sent out to look at there, find pickup parts to see if it was the problem with the engine. So we spent most of the day in the Mojave Desert picking up blown up engine parts <laughs> to simulate the missile. The top tank in the Atlas was liquid oxygen, and that's what that top tank contained, liquid oxygen. That was the oxidizer, very cold. The bottom tank contained what was called rocket propellant one, or RP-1. High grade of kerosene. And of course, the purpose was to test it in a simulated uh, configuration. But of course, there's, no, there's things that happen in flight on a missile that you cannot simulate on a test stand. Complete cluster. We've tested one engine at a time, either the booster or the sustainer. There was two groups in operation the development group that I was in and the test group that actually ran the testing. They had the responsibility. The engines were delivered from North American's factory in on the called the Slauson facility. Delivered up here to the pre-test building, the building behind it. And there, they, they installed the instrumentation. They performed any final assembly of parts that were shipped short. And that took a few days. They bring Fahrenheit, which is higher than the boiling point of iron. So if that water flow were to be interrupted, 
even momentarily, and that may have happened. And that would melt the flame water like butter. But we run, in the beginning, we run very short tests. The Germans, there was two working up here in the network with Von Braun, Walter Reed, whenever he got to meet with Dieter Hussle, who I got to know quite well. They directed the Americans of atomical bomb doing a test.